Hello everybody, this is Tech Cut. In this video, what we're going to be doing is taking a look at another distribution specifically for your home lab. This one is called Umbrella, and it looks somewhat similar to kind of a, a macOS interface with all your uh, containers here, Nextcloud, uh, Pi-hole, whatever you want. Supposedly, there's an app store, and this is very similar to another distribution that we covered previously called Casa OS. Both of them for the installation seem to have just a little bash script you run to get it up and going. Of course, always kind of run through these scripts before you go ahead and install them. Usually they're available on their GitHub. There's a link here for Casa. And then if I go over here, there's also a link to their GitHub for Umbrella. And these types of distributions are really cool, especially if it's your first time getting into home labbing. Just makes it all easy. Makes it so you don't have to be in the CLI trying to... Uh, make docker compose files and all that stuff but this is our main focus right here we have our little install script we are going to be throwing this into proxmox in a little bit with an actual container which is becoming my favorite way to use proxmox i have my jellyfin server right here it's been up and running for some time and these containers are cool because they utilize or they share kind of the kernel with proxmox so them the containers themselves don't need a whole operating system running behind them well they do have that it's just shared so it's not like an additional virtualized whole ubuntu running on top of the uh, debian base that proxmox is you are going to want to do this it's probably best to do this on like a clean install of ubuntu or debian like i said what we're going to do real quick is just spin up a container so this is going to be under proxmox i'm going to call this uh umbrella for now give it a password and this is just my root password and then we go next i already have a template i'm going to be diving into uh, containers and all that within nextcloud in the very near future so be watching out for that gonna go with standard ubuntu let's, uh, <clears throat> let's bump this up to 32 gigs go next uh let's give this an extra cpu core it's always better to have two than one uh, 512 megs that's probably not going to work let's go with uh 492 i think that's four gigs the first swap that couldn't stay the same here let's change this ipv4 from a static to dc or dhcp so we can actually have an internet connection let's go next next and finish and just like that it's going to spin up our uh, little uh, ubuntu container and because it's not having to do a whole server install it's going to be rather quick if i start this up here jump into the console you'll see how quick it actually does this boom we're in root type in the password i just created you're in a in ubuntu i didn't even really cut that section too much so now we're going to go ahead and install this supposedly just this curl command head back over here and actually before we do this let's uh do our typical updates and upgrades we don't need sudo i'm just going to do this from a root and these uh these containers are very light so i'm pretty sure i need to grab curl so let's do apt install and i will note that this is really cool if we go over to summary here you can see how much it's using it's running a full system upgrade right now and this container by itself is using about 70 80 ish megabytes of ram and almost none of the cpu so that's that's rather nice so there we go i think it set up curl so now we should be able to just paste on this uh, curl command here and hit enter it's gonna go through the installation process i see a lot of uh pulls and whatnot so this is definitely utilizing docker while this does this if we go do they have any good documentation at all community there we go support forums uh, it seems moderately active aha here's their blog this looks like media yeah it is medium so yeah just really integrating a nice gui interface with what is uh, i'm very much assuming to be docker i mean it really doesn't hurt oh this is done all right so now we should be able to access it either at this url or at this ip address on my local uh network let's do that there we go okay we're logging in and it seems to have worked pretty good really nice to be able to throw up that container super easy let's run through this uh, initial setup process in their actual graphical environment so name let's call this Brandon, can I do full name? Do they allow spaces? Give myself a password. At least 12 characters. What do you mean you want me to be safe? Um, <laughs> I think that's 12. Okay, let's create that. Oh, we got confetti. Reminds me of a canvas <laughs> when you uh, submit an assignment on time. <laughs> All right. See, I, I mean, it is a pretty user interface here. This is going to respond. So it does respond. Uh, install your first app. 
We have a uh, Bitcoin garbage. We have some uh, self-hoster stuff and a uh, networker, -er. networker, hoster, a -er. bunch of errs. Um, uptime Kuma for sure. Let's just go ahead and grab that. I mean, okay, yeah, this is this is was looking really nice. This is a lot of more visually appealing than something like a Casa OS, and that doesn't really have too much stuff in their uh, app store. So let's click install. May take a few minutes. Can I close this out? Oh, it open. It finished. Never mind. Uh, so if I open that, it's going to open it up in a new tab with the port. All right, easy peasy. Looks good. I love Uptime Kuma. Linode's not sponsoring this video, but I have a video up on the Linode channel if you want to learn more. But this is pretty cool. If I go like port, for example, this is my Jellyfin server. What is it? This is why I love Proxmox. You know, let's jump over here, go to console, IP, okay, and it's 57. So 57 on the port, 8096. Oh. Is that Jellyfin? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Save. And Jellyfin is up at 100%. So that's cool. Uptime Kuma. Let's close this out. How does it display? Okay, so we have all of our apps listed here. So Uptime Kuma is really good for managing uptime, but this just seems like really, especially installed through here, to actually kind of get a good homepage layout of your application. So home is what we're on. We have the app store settings light mode or dark mode and then we have log out here what is this Ooh, schnazzy wallpapers that we could change to i mean this one's pretty nice but i love me a good uh forest wallpaper reminds me of home let's dive into settings well what do we got here so we're using four gigs out of our 33 29 gigs available gives us our ram utilization we cool if these are like little widgets on the home page that's one uh feature that i would suggest they have two-factor authentication uh, change your password, remote access with a little key, uh, shut down, restart, troubleshoot version, check for update, no updates. Okay. I mean, not too complicated. This is a really, really simple uh, dashboard and user experience here. Let's check out the app store, see what else they got going on. So code server for VS Code, Calib Calibre web for your eBooks, uh, lightning shell, looks like they got some naps. Home Assistant, I'm not familiar with a lot of these. They have Pi-Hole, I'm familiar with some of this stuff over here. Uh, Explorers, the real question is, do they have, I, I didn't see it, do they have transmission? There's no search feature. There needs to be a search feature. Uh, um, I mean, I'm not really too interested in anything else they have on here. Except, well, they have Simple Torrent, I don't even know what that is. Can you add a VPN? I don't think so. Torrent Watcher, Extra Trackers, no, no, no. So I'd want to install a VPN off of this, not off of this, but through Proxmox if I wanted to use this for uh, this purpose. Who we've got down here, developer. So let's go to the developer. It should be a GitHub link, it is. There we go, simple torrent. So it's cool that they do provide the, these links and information. It doesn't look like this one's been updated in, in a good amount of time. So the App Store is really cool, but it is kind of lacking in the uh, options and availability because to have that and not have transmission is uh, interesting, to say the least. But Nextcloud, Nextcloud is, an, is always a good go-to. So if I went down here, we have the source code, we have Git support, just click install. And here, oh, that's cool, it gives you the uh, default username and password so you can log in and change this stuff after, after the fact. Oh yeah, I was curious too if I could close this out and let it just keep working in the background. If I hit manage apps here, <laughs> just like an iPhone, it kind of brings up the uh, X. When that uh, next cloud one, it's, one is done, it's probably going to allow me to move them around. Oh, yep, see, there it is, starting. And if I go manage apps again, then you could see what I meant when I... Oh, can you not? Oh, no. Well, that's another feature that should probably be a thing. Oh, the default settings aren't the best. Okay. So it looks like I'd have to edit the config. This doesn't really help in how... Oh, shit. This doesn't really uh, help much in the way of that if I, like... Right click on the app, it doesn't do anything. Clicking on it just opens it. If I go App Store and let's go back to Nextcloud, I mean, I can still access this stuff and go to get support. But I mean, if I didn't have any like knowledge on exactly what's going on, that would be a very difficult thing to figure out. But like I said, I'm pretty sure that this is just using Docker. Yep. So like a Docker container LS. 
Yeah, we can see everything that's going on here. We have the next club that we fired up. A couple of their own things. Docker itself, Engine X. But yeah, I mean, it's cool. It's not perfect. But it's beautiful. That's for absolute certain. Whoever designed this really did a fantastic job. It just needs a little bit more functionality and some more integration with Docker. So it's not so for people using this, especially, like I said, if they don't have any experience with any of this stuff, you're not going to know how to go and, and edit those configurations. So some help with that would be nice. But if this continues development and goes forward and all that, I think that this can be an absolutely fantastic product for home labbing. But I said earlier, I might keep it. Uh, probably not for now. I mean, something like a yacht, for example, isn't as pretty, but it has a, a lot more control when it comes to the actual Docker containers and a lot more uh, templates to actually get a lot of different containers that you're actually going to want to use, such as in here, I didn't see any media servers. There's no Plex. There's no Jellyfin. So if I could uh, request from the developers something, it'd be more applications more obvious Docker integration within the uh, user interface here. Even if it's just like a little advanced button that opens up some of that stuff. But other than that, I can't really think of anything. I'm, I'm excited to see the future development of this. And if you are interested in checking it out for yourself, there'll be a link down below. Uh, with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and goodbye.